Titus 2 is God's plan for all women in Christ. Don't ever forget that. It's not some beautiful Hebrew, Hebrew poem about this, this woman that is excelling everyone and everything. It's a practical working guide for how Christ church is to permeate society starting in the marriage and the home and reaching out to influence the culture. Titus 2 is not meant to be an inspirational picture of some yesteryear woman of virtue from 2,000 years ago. God's word presents the Titus 2 woman as God's plan, God's desire, God's marching orders for all women in Christ of any age and of any era in Christ's church. And if there's one passage every young lady should memorize, it's right here. Now, if you've got to choose between Bob Nichols' card and Titus 2, do them both. But keep the Titus 2 when the new one cycles through the next month. Every young woman should have these words etched on her heart. If there's one paragraph in the Bible, every bride-to-be should have down as a part of her preparation to be married. You know, in that big, thick notebook of all the, the different designs and all the different invitations and how the decoration and what the case going to look like and, and the dress and the ceremony and everything, in that big notebook of all the preparations that brides-to-be have, this paragraph should be down as her desire if there are a handful of verses every tired mother and busy wife needs as the ones they hold on to when they have just enough strength to make it through the end of the day, then look no further. You've found it. It's this passage. Welcome to the complete woman of God, the complete woman as defined and described by God. This complete woman of grace is saved by grace and energized by the Spirit of God to live such an extraordinary life in the world for her husband and around her children that all will notice she is different because she's in step with the Spirit of God who is living out through her the Word of God in her life. That's what this is intended by God to be. Ministry in Christ's church was never easy from the start. In fact, look back at chapter 1 of Titus. You're in chapter 2. Look at chapter 1 and verse 12. Because Titus was a missionary church planner to Crete. And look at the description of the people of the congregation, the cultural background of these people. Do you remember when we started this back on Mother's Day? I told you this. This was a hard group to serve. One of them, it says in verse 12, Titus says, A prophet of their own said, Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, and lazy gluttons. Now, he would not have gotten the Norman Vincent Peel positive speaking award, would he? I mean, he really spoke the truth, and uh, that's how lives are changed. But look what he says. He's quoting this, this pagan prophet, and he said, this testimony is true. Wow. Paul quotes a pagan and says this horrible indictment of the culture is true. Therefore, he tells Titus, rebuke them sharply. The people of this island, the people in your church planting uh, parameters, in, in the area that you are working on Crete, rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in faith. Wow. I love that verse. You know why? Just think of a miracle that was going on in Crete to find a group of believers that were saved out of such a godless society. Can you imagine a society that's permeated by those three character qualities? They came from centuries of culture do, dominated by, look back at verse 12, total. Cretans are always, they were total untrustworthiness. They were liars. So total untrustworthiness and total out-of-control living. They were evil beasts. They were just living like animals. Sounds like our culture today, doesn't it? They were undisciplined in pursuing their own personal lust-filled appetites. They were lazy gluttons. From these two verses, when the gospel of Jesus Christ entered the Roman world, entered Crete, entered the New Testament world, it entered a group of people that were warped by sin, that were darkened, mixed up, and scarred. And that inspires me. Do you know why? Because if the gospel of Jesus Christ could so transform one of these 
totally characterized by untrustworthiness and lust and self-indulgent people into a culture of people that were grace-energized servants of Christ's church, then Jesus can work with anyone. Did you catch that? If he can work with the Cretans, he can work with anyone. That's the message of the gospel. That's the message that, that, that we see in Christ's ministry. Jesus Christ was able to transform those who were totally captivated by the demons, totally captivated by their lust, totally captivated by their hatred. And that gospel goes on. Secondly, if God can make saints out of people that were descended in their personal character until Paul describes them with this trio of disparaging words, Cretans are always liars and evil beasts and lazy gluttons, he can change anyone no matter how weak, how wicked, or how undisciplined. Anyone can be changed. Anyone can become an exemplary model to be followed. That's what Paul told Titus to tell this church. Well, what was the plan that God had in mind to transform these unsaintly people? Back to Titus chapter 2, starting in verse 3. He did not call Titus as a pastor to train all the women in these qualities God wanted them to cultivate. No, he didn't say, Titus, start a school for women. He said, no, Titus, call upon the godly older women of Christ church. He singled out the women of faith, those who had already learned to love their husbands, learned to love their children, and so on. And he told them...